welcome to the group exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells at the Hanover Messe 2012. Right now I'm going to be talking to the European Hydrogen Association, to the Executive Director Marike Reijald. Please take a seat, join us for the interview. There are free drinks. Um, and now I'd like to welcome Marike to the stage. Thank you. Hi, Marika. Sorry. Yes, hi. Your microphone should be on. Yeah. So, the European Hydrogen Association, you represent 21 different organizations. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about um, the role and, and goal of the, of the association. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, actually, since uh, 2000 already, uh, the European Hydrogen Association was set up by uh, six uh, national associations, uh, uh, one of them the German association. And uh, since then uh, we have been uh, gradually uh, broadening um, uh, European coverage up to 21 national associations uh, right now. Of course, uh, we like to cover all the uh, station, the uh, associations of the uh, member states, the 27 member states. We have good coverage also in the new member states in Eastern Europe. A lot of uh, the associations still linked, of course, to some of the space programs there. Uh, good experience uh, with an uh, uh, important uh, technology also for uh, energy storage uh, with uh, electrolysis fuel cells. So uh, yeah, we are uh, now the 21 uh, national uh, associations and then also of course uh, with uh, good links into uh, the regional activities as we are uh, hosting the partnership of uh, regions in hydrogen fuel cells and uh, electromobility uh, higher in our offices in Brussels. Okay, great. And today we want to talk about your campaign, Hydrogen in uh, EU Energy Storage Policy. Why is um, hydrogen as a storage option now on the agenda for you? Well, I think we heard in the, the previous uh, press conference, uh, of course, that uh, this uh, storage solution uh, with hydrogen uh, is feasible. Uh, it should be considered as one of the storage solutions that the, uh, also the EU Commission uh, is looking for in uh, achieving their targets. Uh, the EU Commission, uh, as you know, have all, has all kinds of targets and uh, one of the most popular in our area are, of course, uh, the targets on uh, the renewable energy, the 20%. Uh, what member states needs to deliver, all the national percentages of renewable energy that need to be uh, put into our energy grids. And this is uh, really a time where we see that uh, also the Commission has a better impression on what that actually means uh, in making yeah. sure that those uh, targets are achieved and what it uh, means for uh, local uh, distribution networks uh, as well. Yeah, so, so tell us, what is um, so special about hydrogen storage? What, what, why does it have such a good value proposition? Well, as, as, as said before, I think uh, hydrogen has an almost unlimited uh, uh, physical capacity of storing uh, energy storage. It, it has the same uh, challenges, of course, in putting this uh, at a uh, local uh, uh, territorial um, in an area where you uh, could put it or uh, where you could uh, uh, store it, just like uh, other uh, storage uh, solutions uh, that we are uh, seeing uh, popping up now in this discussion on energy storage at EU level. All the conventional storage solutions are facing the same uh, issues and challenges that uh, the hydrogen storage uh, in general is, is facing uh, with regards to the, the capacities, with regards to uh, um, uh, uh, population uh, areas where you have to put it or where you need to put it in, uh, acceptance on usage of uh, hydrogen. Uh, also, the uh, other storage solutions have no experience with the larger quantities that we are looking at. So we think at this uh, time and age, if this uh, hydrogen solution is a feasible solution, it should be considered in the list of all the conventional uh, storage solutions for energy that are currently being uh, discussed in Brussels. 
Fantastic. And is there a, um, a specific focus from one kind of application for the storage? Is it renewables or is it, or is it across the board? No. Uh, sorry, you're you're asking about the applications. Yeah. Is there, are you getting specific support for from one type of application for this campaign for pushing um, storage? in the EU policy? Well, I think we increasingly, and that is not only for the storage solution, but we see increasingly in uh, also the EU Commission uh, an increasing interest uh, in hydrogen, of course, as an uh, energy uh, carrier um, in relation to the other um, applications of uh, uh, the other energy carrier electricity, um, more prominently, of course, in, in transport. But there is definitely, and we see that also in the activities of uh, the regions uh, that are uh, becoming very visible in uh, the European scene, the regions uh, in this uh, partnership for hydrogen fuel cells and electric mobility, this higher uh, association that has been set up four years ago, especially to look at the issues of implementing uh, the hydrogen at first as an energy carrier, uh, for transport uh, and stationary applications, but now uh, this association is also looking at the full uh, range of electromobility solutions, including electric vehicles. And that was actually uh, upon request of the EU Commission uh, for this association uh, hired to look at this, that also the Commission um, needs to get a better understanding and is also uh, acknowledging that it needs to get a better understanding of how these different uh, new energy, clean energy networks will work out in practice. So solutions like hydrogen linked to transport have indeed an uh, increasing interest uh, in the EU. And we have to formulate how the hydrogen solution, when, where and at what cost it can be implemented the best way. So you are, as the European Hydrogen Association, um, providing the, the visibility um, of the industry at EU level, and is, is that right? And that's what, why you're running a campaign now? Can you maybe tell us a bit more about the Yeah, the as I said, since we are in Brussels actively, I think since 2006, and we are still one of the few associations that are lobbying for the use of uh, hydrogen as an energy carrier. Uh, we are working together with a lot of sister organizations, so we get the message also told by others now, not only as uh, hydrogen proponents, because that's of course important uh, in, in our sector that you in interest um, more organizations that will be using uh, hydrogen as a uh, potential solution. Uh, are talking about you as well. But uh, with increasing evidence, because I think also, and this year they are uh, present at uh, Hanover Fair as well, at the group exhibit, the joint undertaking for fuel cells and hydrogen mm -hmm. is of course an excellent uh, uh, instrument in showing the feasibility of what hydrogen can do in, in a whole range of areas, if it's transport, uh, production storage, uh, uh, energy storage, uh, the early market applications, uh, the applications with forklift trucks, um, but also in indicating what still needs to happen. The results of these uh, socio-economic projects that are coming out of the um, joint undertaking for fuel cells and hydrogen demonstrate that indeed we need an, uh, a very strong and uh, support right now in implementing the right uh, components of making sure that uh, hydrogen becomes an, uh, a feasible solution indeed. In your opinion, what still needs to be done um, to get there? Um, what are you hoping to get out of this week at Hanover, at the Messe? <laughs> Well, of course, to, to get the message out uh, to other industries as well, that we, that we need the visibility uh, of the results of projects. I think we see at the Hanover Fair an, an, a, a really good uh, um, uh, demonstration of what is happening in small and medium-sized companies, uh, the products that are now also the, the, the transport applications, the cars that are here, the bus that is here, we even have an airplane that is here. 
um, that th these applications are becoming real and that they need an infrastructure uh, to in order to supply them with uh, with the hydrogen but what we need to demonstrate in Brussels is also uh, the results the, f the the physical results of looking here with Anatrack we are doing this energy storage project and we are uh, riding these buses in daily service in 10 12 cities right now and this is how we supply the hydrogen now but this is what we will need in two, five, ten years time. Not too much along the li uh, far down the line because in Brussels everything is planned in the five-year commission uh, period uh, and our financial cycle in Brussels is ending in 2013. So this is the moment where you need to demonstrate, well, now is the time to put in enough support, financially and political support, in getting hydrogen as an energy storage solution, including in the bigger energy programs. And are you confident that the campaign will succeed? Of course. I mean, if we all work together to, uh, to do this, yes, why not? Because, again, we are not uh, behind or different from any other conventional storage solution. We are all looking at a whole new picture of how the energy infrastructure in Europe is, looks like. So why not put in our options and our solutions at this point in time but also tell them in Brussels what we exactly need? how much, what type of support from which member states because EU is not only EU Commission, I think especially yeah. in energy infrastructure development but also transport uh, uh, infrastructure development the member states are important as well so you have to target your messages carefully. But we have good examples. Uh, Spain is in our uh, mm -hmm. Um, a booth as well this year and we hear a lot about Spain in other contexts of the EU, EU uh, uh, messaging but Spain is one of the front runners in research and development in linking renewables with hydrogen there's a lot to learn from these first projects and a lot to learn uh, about their uh, experiences in putting it to work locally and that can be communicated as an, uh, uh, one of the actions with a country like Spain as well and uh, that's yeah. the beauty I think still of the European Union that we have a lot of uh, input potential input of results of all these different countries with all different uh, type of um, requirements climate uh, transport wise infrastructure wise uh, that we can communicate to the com uh, Commission as evidence of what needs needs to be done. Well, I wish you so much success with it. I hope you will be back next year and um, at the group exhibit and can tell us um, that, you, that you were successful in this campaign. I hope so too. Let's bring uh, the commissioner here then to tell us uh, what the success was. I think that yes, would be good. I think that would be excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kim. And please stay seated because next up will be um, Elcor about introducing a new fuel cell product category for domestic co-generation. Thank you.